Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In the previous video, we saw our first introduction to creating a simple SQL script stored procedure. In this video, we want to continue looking at SQL script stored procedures, but look at a specialized type of stored procedure called a scalar UDF. Scalar UDF has a single output scalar parameter means a, a single variable, not, not a table, not a, not a row of data, but just one single variable. And because it has this very specialized interface, it has certain special properties, mainly that it can be embedded inside of a select statement. So unlike the regular stored procedure that can be executed with the call command, this can actually be embedded inside of an existing SQL statement and just becomes like one of the columns that you're selecting from in the SQL statement. So it can be a great way to embed a little calculation inside your select statement. For instance, we might be selecting uh, first name and last name from a particular table, but then we might include a third column that is a scalar UDF that takes the input of other columns from the same record and combines them together into an output of a, a new column that you know formats the two columns together. And the scalar UDF is really nice because it can process in mass on many rows of data at a time. It isn't as though you have to loop at it and do it one record at a time. It's going to be executed in the massively parallel uh, uh, construction of the query itself. So it's a very powerful concept and, and not very costly from a performance standpoint. One of these, let's go back over to the Web IDE. And uh, we have a functions folder already from earlier when we created a table function to put it inside our calculation view. Now this is going to be a scalar function. Um, so slightly, slightly different because uh, the interface is not going to return a table but a single variable. Let's go ahead and uh, say new function. Now in the HANA Studio and the old repository, you used to have to specify two different file extensions, two different types if you were going to do a table function as opposed to a scalar function. In the Web IDE and HDI, we simplified things. There's only the HDB function file extension. There's only one menu option here. And the system's just smart enough now to figure out based upon the interface that you define whether it's actually a scalar UDF or a table UDF. By the way, UDF stands for User Defined Function. Um, it's basically, we could just call it function, but UDF is sort of the industry term that was already used by other databases. So to be consistent, uh, we, we, we generally use the same terminology. So let's, uh, let's create one that uh, basically the scenario that I described earlier. Say uh, get full name. And uh, we've already prepared the source code over here. So let's grab it. Name dot So let's pull this in. And what we see here, we find a function named to get full name. We're going to take several input parameters, first, middle, and last name. Uh, and the employee ID, and then we'll return a full name. Uh, so basically, we'll just take the, uh, if the middle name is null, then we'll just do uh, last name, comma, first name. Uh, if it's not null, then we'll include it in there. We'll do last name, first name, and then space middle name. So here we see some imperative logic, if checks. Uh, we see concatenation, the the two pipe sign here, that's concatenate. So we're basically saying take this column, concatenate it together with this string, uh, and then concatenate it together with this column. Uh, we have another imperative check. If the employee ID is uh, has a value in it, uh, then, um, and then concatenate that in there as well, in, in parentheses at the end. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So we'll save that. And uh, let's go back to the procedure that we had in the previous exercise 
and instead of returning the login name, uh, which might not be very uh, very nice, let's uh, let's put the full name in there. Now that we have a function to help us do that, so uh, let me get the source code here. Get po header data SQL, and let's pull this source code in. are. As we change the interface, we're now going to return the full name. And most importantly, inside our uh, select from, now we're going to, uh, the first column is going to be get full name. So that's going to call this function once for each record that is pulled back from the criteria. But it's also going to pass in name first, name middle, name last. Well, not hard code. It's not passing in those strings. It's going to say whatever the value is in the column for the particular record that's being processed, pass that into the function. The function can then concatenate them together and it'll return the results as full name. And we'll get, we'll just get a table of records back. We won't realize that one of the columns was actually calculated uh, using this function. So we're good now with our source code. Let's go ahead and build our database module is get again. Once that's complete, then we can go back over here. And yes, we could, um, you can test a function directly. So you would generate a select statement, but we would have to pass in some values. We, we could hard code them and test them, but it's nicer. We already integrated this in our stored procedure. So let's just go run our stored procedure again. And we'll select. And notice now, instead of the username, we get the uh, full name, first, middle, last name. Uh, the second record only had uh, a first and last name, so we no middle. And, uh, and the last one has a first, middle, and last name as well. So uh, I hope you've gotten an idea of the specialized uh, interface that we get with the scalar uh, function and how it can be embedded inside of a select statement.